to change the situation. Whatever we're going through right now, whatever you're experiencing right now, prayer will work. And my brothers, I'm petitioning you today to pray for me. And in return, I will pray for you. Whatever you're doing, whatever you are, stop what you're doing when you think about it what's going on and just start praying for me and I'll pray for you. I just want you to be blessed, my brothers and sisters. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed.
Good morning, good morning, my dearly beloved Greater Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. This is the day that the Lord has made, amen. And certainly we will rejoice and be glad in it, amen. I don't know about you, but I am glad to be here today, amen. So many have gone on and so many are still uh, passing on, but God has kept us here, amen, and we are eternally grateful, amen. We know that uh, God knows what he's doing, amen. And he wants us who are left here to uh, continue to hear what he is saying, amen. Don't listen to those different ones who are talking, amen, telling we shouldn't do this and we shouldn't do that and it looked ridiculous, you know, wearing masks and all this kind of stuff. You wear your mask, amen. We're going to wear ours, amen. We're going to practice this, uh, what the CDC has put out, amen. We're going to continue to practice, amen. Uh, Greater Galilee, we are blessed, amen. God has kept us, amen, through, what, through it all. And uh, certainly those of you who are watching by YouTube or social media, God bless your hearts. We are so glad that you have joined us this morning here in the great city of Little Rock, Arkansas. Amen. Uh, this is a good day today. Amen. We are in a series of sermons. Amen. As we're working on living above our circumstances. Amen. We can live above what's going on around us. Amen. Or what God allows. Amen. So we're going to uh, give honor to our God, amen, our Father, Jehovah God, and to his darling son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, our guide. Amen. We're certainly going to uh, just give God the glory today. Amen. We give honor to them, to him. Amen. Uh, amen. So uh, hey, let's get a, have a word of prayer today, and uh, we'll get into our message. Eternal God, our Father, we come in the name of Jesus one more day. You have allowed us to come, Father God, and share your word. And we pray, God, that your word will come forth today, Father God. And we pray that uh, those who are listening will receive and grow and uh, move on forward. Father God, we just ask your, your blessing upon this message today, and we ask that you use us in a mighty way, and we'll be so careful that you get all the praise, the honor, and the glory, for you are worthy to be praised. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 My, my, my. Working, amen, six months, amen. We have been here, amen. God is still working through our circumstances. He's still working through our uh, situations that's going on. He's still working through this pandemic that's going on. And uh, we just have to continue to encourage you, our listeners today, to keep moving forward. Amen. Uh, God, he, he inhabits the praise of his people. Amen. And we are his children, and he wants us to praise him, knowing that he is still in control of all things. Isn't that right? So we want to get into our word today. We won't hold you long, but we want you to... Uh, hear what God is saying. Amen. And we will try to apply his principles to our life during this time, during this season in our lives. Amen. Let's go to the book of Philippians, if you will, that first chapter. Amen. The series of sermon is living above our circumstances. Uh, that's the title of the series, the theme. Uh, let's go to that first chapter of Philippians, beginning with the 12th through the 14th verse, and then verse 21. 
But I would, ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident of my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. And the 21st verse, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Amen, amen. Uh, let's use as a thought for the day, the power with a positive purpose. The power with a positive purpose. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are here today. Amen. Striving to be all that God wants us to be. Although what we see around us is all negative. But if our purpose, if we have a purpose, amen, that purpose will be much powerful when we concentrate on, amen, the power. Amen. It'll be more powerful when we concentrate upon the power, the purpose. Amen. Uh, I, I do know God have a purpose for us all. And, and the world seems like it's full of negativity. Amen. But when we look at what God is doing, in this season, amen, we do know that the power is in a positive purpose. God could turn any negative into a positive. Amen. Uh, anything negative, God can turn into a positive. Amen. But we have to be in position because God doesn't allow us to go through things in life. Amen. Without having some kind of situations or circumstances taking place. Amen. I'd like to tell you today, those who connect their happiness, and we all are in pursuit of happiness, isn't that right? Those who connect their happiness in life to a visible circumstance around them are targets for disappointment. Amen. Amen. If you connect your happiness in this life with visible, with visible circumstances around you, you are targets for disappointments. Many times, many times, we try to look all, we look everywhere that we can for happiness. And many times we have become disappointed because we didn't find the happiness that we were looking for. Amen. The key to joy today is to have a clearly defined purpose for living. Amen. Uh, I, let me say that again. The key to joy is to have a clearly defined purpose for living. Find out why you're here. Find out, uh, find out why God created you and are still keeping you here, even in times such as these. Amen. This is the foundation in which we build our actions. <sighs> Do you hear me today? This is the foundation in which we build our actions, our affections. Amen. Our aspirations in life. Amen. Uh, only when we have a purpose in life beyond our temporary peace. I know. I, 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 I hope you understand what I'm saying today. Amen. We have a purpose in life beyond. Amen. The temporary pleasures that we seek every day. We all are in pursuit of happiness, amen. 
Uh, but uh, we are always looking in the wrong places. Can I get a witness here today? Uh, we, we, we have a purpose. When we have a purpose in life beyond uh, prosperity, peace, pleasure, and prosperity, that's what we look for in our lives. We will have the foundation, say foundation, amen, of a joyful life, amen. Uh, we we have to look, we have to look in the right places, amen. If we want to have a joyful life, amen. Living above our circumstances, amen. But we have to have, my brothers and sisters, uh, the power with a positive uh, purpose. If we want to live, amen, above our circumstances. Amen. You can have joy. I have three points I want to bring out to you today. And uh, the first one is you can have joy in uh, unwelcome circumstances. Amen. You can have joy in unwelcome circumstances. Amen. Uh, Paul said in verse 12, but I would ye should understand, brethren, which the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. And verse 13 says, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all palaces, all the palace and all other places. Verse 14, and many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without Fear. Here Paul is explaining the source of his abiding joy. Amen. While he's in prison, looking beyond his circumstances. Amen. He, 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 he's explaining the source of his, his joy while in prison that was uh, powerful enough to overcome unwelcome circumstances. My brothers and sisters, unfair uh, criticism and even an uncertain future. Paul, Paul's one purpose in life was to glorify Jesus Christ. Paul viewed his life not uh, through the lens of personal comfort, amen, uh, and prosperity, but through the lens of God's glory. As Paul viewed his present circumstance from an eternal perspective, uh, he could rejoice because his temporary suffering was serving an eternal purpose. Paul's imprisonment provided two things. Do you hear me today? Two things, two things. Uh, the first one was, he had contact with unbelievers. Amen. He had contact with unbelievers, my brothers and sisters. And we, as today, we have contact with unbelievers throughout our day. Amen. We're going to run across someone who does not believe in our Lord and our Savior, doesn't believe in God. And this is where Paul found himself, amen, uh, among uh, unbelievers. Paul was consumed with one, with one passion in life, and that was to glorify Jesus Christ. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, if we, be, if we could just have that kind of passion, amen, to just glorify God, whatever go on around us, we would have a problem, isn't that right? Amen. So his, uh, he was consumed with that one passion. Amen. He, he wanted to preach the gospel in Rome. Can I get a witness here? He wanted to go to Rome, amen, as a preacher, but ended up going as a prisoner. What do you think Paul talked about while uh, being chained to a Roman guard around the clock for hours at a time. What do you think was going through Paul's mind? He, he used his imprisonment as an opportunity 
to share the gospel. My brothers and sisters, you might be on your hospital bed. You might be uh, in the grocery store. You might be at the gas station. If someone approaches you, that's your opportunity to share the word of God. Amen. And the next thing Paul had, uh, he had opportunity to develop enough courage, amen, for the believer, amen. He, he had enough courage. He had to inspire them. Paul's situation was a topic of regular discussion, amen, in Rome due to his courage, amen. Due to his courage, amen, uh, this became a regular discussion, in Rome, many of the Christians in Rome were bold in sharing Jesus Christ in their everyday conversation. Isn't that something that we could be around those who are able to share the gospel? Amen. That would be the top conversation of our day. Amen. Sharing the word of God. Amen. We can't be consumed with all of this stuff going on around us in our workplace, in our home. Amen. Just share the gospel. Amen. Many Christians in Rome, that's, that was the talk of the town. Amen. Paul in prison is still shedding the word of God. If our life purpose is to glorify Jesus, even unwelcome circumstances, amen, can be welcome. This could be an opportunity, amen, to share the word of God. Amen. These circumstances that catches us off guard many times, it causes us sometimes to, 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 to lose focus on what, or why we're here and what we're doing. And we'll start worrying about the circumstances. But take that circumstance. Although it was, it was unplanned, it was, it, it's unwelcome. We didn't welcome that, that problem or that, or that sickness or whatever took place. We didn't welcome it, but it came. But take that opportunity to still share the word of God. Amen. The second thing I want to talk to you about is you can have joy in spite of unfair criticism how many of you get under how, how many of you can relate to that today amen been criticized over something you didn't have anything to do with amen you've been criticized over what people assumed amen this happened amen but i i want you to know today brothers and sisters you can have joy in spite of unfair criticism in verse 15 amen uh, some indeed preach christ even of envy and strife and some also of goodwill verse 16 says the one preach christ of contention not sincerely supposing to add affliction uh, to my bonds verse 17 says but the other of love knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Verse 18, what then, notwithstanding every way, whether in presence or in truth, amen, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, we are saved to defend the gospel. Amen. I, I, I'm not saying you have to get in an argument. Amen. But uh, you stand on what you believe. Amen. Out of God's word. Amen. Don't don't get in a big debate over it. God's word is not a debated situation. Amen. His words are not debatable. His word is his word. Amen. And we need to understand that today when your life purpose is to glorify Christ, you, you won't become concerned with the criticism of others. Amen. Too many of us, we, we're easy. They, they know what pushes your button. Amen. They know what will cause you to get upset. Amen. It seems like that is what they will bring up in your life. Amen. They might even bring up your past, even though you're struggling still to overcome some things in your past. Seem like they will bring up your past and say, oh, she's not what she ought to be. Or he's not uh, what he's supposed to be. 
But I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, don't, don't be concerned about what they say about you. Amen. Let them criticize you. That means that they're thinking about you. Amen. And then that gives you an opportunity to even pray for them. Isn't that right? Amen. The, the, the motive of this group is and preaching the gospel was to get people to follow them. Amen. That's what happened a lot of times, my brothers and sisters. People will, uh, they will, they will low rate you, talk you down so they can, uh, you, they become the ones that they will begin to listen to. But don't worry about it. You just stand firm on what you believe. Amen. This group's motive was to have the people to follow them. Amen. Paul's motive was to get people to follow Christ. And that's our motive. That should be our motive today. Amen. And, and Paul been through some things. Amen. He went through a lot. Amen. But he, he, he was sold out. Amen. And preaching the word of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, notice here now, my brothers and sisters, Paul, he's not condoning evil. Amen. He's not going along with the evil. Amen. Uh, the motive that they have, but uh, he was so consumed, amen, by the desire, amen, the desire to glorify Jesus Christ. Wouldn't that be something if we could just become so consumed, amen, in what we do for the Lord? Amen. They could talk about us. They could, they could do say all manner of evil against you. But you, you're not even listening. You don't even hear that stuff. Amen. You're just so consumed about doing the will of God. Amen. And, and you can continue. That's what a power is. Amen. Amen. Because your purpose is positive. Amen. You're not here. Amen. To be seen or heard of men. Amen. You're just here to make sure the Lord Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen. So it, oh, this is why Paul, he was so consumed, amen, by his desire to see Christ glorified, that he refused to be bothered by the impure motive of those who desire to hurt him. Amen. Don't you know, brothers and sisters, when you're doing what's right, when you know you know, you know that you're doing the right thing, you know what you're doing with God has called you to do. Don't you know that these things will come up? Amen. Amen. They, they can't touch you. They can't hurt you. Amen. Uh, when you are consumed with uh, your purpose, amen, <laughs> and, and that purpose mainly is to please God, amen, not that men may follow you, amen, but they may follow Jesus Christ. Isn't that right? Amen. And, 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 and brothers and sisters, this is what a Christ-centered purpose does for you. Amen. You wouldn't worry about what people say about you. Amen. You'll continue to move forward in spite of. Isn't that right? Then, my brothers, that's when you know that you know that you know that you're in God's will. Amen. See, see Satan, he, he, he's real cunning. Amen. He, he knows when God's will is being carried out. I mean, he know when God's will is for being fulfilled. That's when he attacks us. Amen. But don't get so consumed with how, his, 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 uh, how he come to you. Don't be consumed, amen, at how he come to you. He's going to come at you because he don't want you to continue to do what uh, God has called you to do. Isn't that right? Amen. What people say can't hurt you. Uh, it was an old saying, sticks and stone may break my bones, but words can never harm you. Amen. Amen. I, I, I know. Amen. I, I, I do know. Amen. Sometimes, amen, people can put your name out there, and, and those people who put your name out there have friends, and they listen, amen, to them, amen, and your name is out there, but let it be. Amen. Your, your name might be out there, but you continue to do God's will. And after a while, amen, you'll see God being manifested. Amen. You'll see Jesus being manifested. Amen. Uh, 
So don't let these kind of distractions, my brothers and sisters, cause you to lose your focus on glorifying God. Are you here today? Amen. We can't let it happen. Amen. We got to continue to move in the direction that God will have us move. And the third and final thing is you can have joy in the face of an uncertain future. Amen. You can have joy in an uncertain future future. Amen. I, I, I know. Amen. Verse 19 says, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. Verse 20, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be my life or my death. And verse 21 says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. Could you imagine, my brothers and sisters, amen, could you imagine uh, what it would be like to wait not days, not weeks, not months, but you wait for years to find out whether or not you would be executed for your faith. This is what Paul's in prison for. Days, weeks, months, years. Amen. Wondering. Amen. Uh, whether you would be executed for your faith. Yet here, my brothers and sisters, Paul. It's certain that regardless of the verdict, my Lord, he will be delivered. Isn't that something? Out of this world until the next one. And you know, that's, we work for that. We work for that day. Amen. You know, many times people worry about those going on. Amen. Yeah, they'll be missed, but. Uh, when God called them, they just and you know where they stood with the Lord. Uh, we know where they are. Amen. They are with the Lord. Isn't that right? Amen. Uh, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, whether that means uh, uh, delivered out of prison or delivered out of this world until the next one. Whether he lived or died, it made no difference to Paul. Because either way, he knew Christ would be glorified. He knew Christ would be magnified. Isn't that right? Now, my brothers and sisters, I just want to share this with you. He said, you know, Paul, he was a good example. Amen. His, his example was sure. Amen. He knew that he knew, that he knew, and I'm so glad today that, that I know, I can speak for me. I know that I know that I know that my Redeemer lives today. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, when, when unbelievers look at our lives and see the way we are handling, handling amen, the uh, unwelcome and unplanned circumstances, and when they see how we take unfair Criticism, amen, and how we are handling the, the now in an uncertain future. Amen, when this pandemic started, when this virus started, uh, I, I believe we all was in a, a sense of awe, amen, when it started and everything started shutting down, amen, uh, not only a few cities, amen, but the whole world. Yes, we didn't know what was taking place. Amen. We didn't, we didn't know what to, we didn't even know if we would be here today. We didn't even, we was even, we, we were uncertain if we would be alive today, the way the death, how the death number was rising every day. Amen. How, uh, how this virus was hidden here everywhere, all over the world. Amen. We didn't, we didn't know. Amen. We didn't know what was taking place. And then, my brothers and sisters, as they see us, we're still going on in the name of the Lord. 
Amen. We didn't know. We, didn't, we weren't looking for this virus. Isn't that right? But God already saw it coming. And for whatever reason, amen, we got to know as his children is for our good. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. So when people see us going on, even in spite of, amen, uh, this, this pandemic, they're watching to see how we are handling it right now. Amen. We don't know what the future holds, do we? But we do know who holds the future. Amen. And this future, my brothers and sisters, is, is, is too small. Amen. God can hold his future in the palm of his hand. Isn't that right? I mean, there's no, nothing too, too large or too, or too big for God. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, as I said, when people see how we're handling this, amen, I just want you to know we are spiritual telescopes that makes Christ look bigger. Hallelujah today. We are spiritual telescopes, amen, that make Christ feel closer to us. Have you ever looked through a telescope? Amen. And it just draws everything close to you. That's what we are, amen. As children of God, we are telescopes. Amen. And when they see us, amen, we're only drawing them closer to him. I heard Jesus say, and if I, and if I be lifted up from the earth, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. Uh, we are spiritual telescopes. Amen. And this telescope, when they see us, it, it makes Christ look more real. Because they went, how can they continue to walk and to talk? Amen. And to live a life. When all of this is going on, I see how they are handling it. I can't understand how they are handling it. Now, who knows? Uh, we might be the only Bible that they may ever read. Let us continue to walk, amen, as a spiritual telescope. Isn't that right? I don't know, uh, my brothers and sisters, but Jesus is magnified through our difficulties. Amen. He's magnified through our circumstances. Amen. That's what a power is. Amen. And when, when, when they see us going on, and they're saying we are fulfilling our purpose, I'll let nothing separate me. This is what Paul said. Separate me from the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. We, we can't let these things that's going on around us today. We cannot let it uh, cause us to lose focus on our purpose. Isn't that right? My brothers and sisters, as I get ready to close today, Jesus was magnified. Yes, he was magnified when he went to Calvary, when they hung him between two thieves. Amen. He was magnified. He, he died a crucial death. Put in a grave one Friday evening. Can I get a witness here today? But uh, he stayed in the grave Friday night, all day Saturday, Saturday night he stayed there. But according to God's word, on the third day, early, on the third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Now, what is your purpose today? Your answer will be determined how you respond. To unwelcome circumstances, how you respond to unfair criticism, how you respond to an uncertain future. The awesomeness is, the awesomeness is uh, about this is that uh, Christ's circumstance, God, it wasn't a surprise to him. He know he came here to die. Amen. What's awesome about it is uh, he knew that he would have those who would criticize him unfairly, that he would be condemned unfairly. Oh, that's awesome. But one thing 
that he was certain of. Amen. He was certain that at the right hand of God, he sits right now interceding for you and I. Oh, it ought to be a shout right there. Amen. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. Amen. He's interceding for you and I. He know we're striving. He know we are going through some of these things that's taking place. Amen. But my God, my God, we are here today. We're striving. Amen. So I know, want you to know today that the power, amen, you have to have, you can't have but to have power. Amen. With a positive purpose. Make your purpose positive. Amen. And God will indwell you with power from on high. Isn't that right? God bless and keep you is our prayer today. Amen. Uh, we ask that you would accept him in your life today. Yes, many of you out there listening, you have been criticized. Amen. You have been judged unfairly. Isn't that right? All of these things took place in your life. Amen. But look at you. You're still here. Amen. And that's just giving you an opportunity to shine more for the Lord. Amen. Let them talk about you. Let them lie on you. Amen. The truth will come out. Amen. I, I, I believe that. Amen. And then those who, who believe the lies. Amen. They will look. Amen. Look at what's going on right now. Amen. Look like the, all the lies and all these things that, that's coming out. Amen. It, it's turning people's faces. Amen. May God bless and keep you is our prayer today. You can live above your circumstances. Amen. No matter what we experience in life, we just know the one we serve. He's better. He's bigger. He's greater than anything that could take place on this earth. Amen. Uh, we extend the invitation now. The door of the church is open. You may come a letter, Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. Amen. I uh, know you're not here physically. Amen. But spiritually, if your heart is here, amen, you can contact us at greater www.greatergalileemissionarybaptistchurch or MBC. Dot com. Amen. That is www.greatergalileembc.com. Amen. And you can sign on. Amen. And uh, we'll get back with you. Amen. If you want to become a member uh, of the Greater Galilee Church family. Uh, we are here. A small church with a big heart. Amen. Our concern is about people. Amen. Uh, and especially in times such as these, amen, we need to be encouraged. Isn't that right? Amen. Uh, a lot going on around us, and God sees it every day. The door of the church is open. Won't you come today? Amen. You can come. Come on. and a positive purpose, amen. If your purpose is positive, there's power. Come on, come on. Amen. Maybe you're tired of being where you are. Come on. Give your life to the Lord, amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. God bless you. God keep you in our prayer today. And brothers and sisters, as we get ready to go, uh, just know we love you and keep our health care professionals in prayer. They're still going through. Amen. Some who are going through have caught the virus. Some have even passed on. Amen. But let's keep them uplifted. Amen. That's our that's our purpose. Amen. It's it's a, it seems unfair, but God knows. Amen. 
He gets our attention some kind of way, isn't that right? Amen. He just wants us to live above it. Amen. Knowing when we trust him, when we put our trust in him, we can live above it. Amen. Knowing that if he's for us, he's more than the whole world and its problems is against us. Isn't that right? Amen. I believe that. Amen. As my grandchildren say, they have YouTube channels and things like that. And we just say, if you, if you would today, just hit the like button and subscribe. Amen. If this message has helped you, amen, we need to know that if you want to become a member of this church, amen, you can come. Amen. Just as you are. Amen. You don't have to have a whole lot. Amen. Just come with what you got. Amen. Just bring yourself. Isn't that right? God, he's more concerned about you than uh, all this other stuff people look at. Amen. God bless and keep you is our prayer. Let's have a word of prayer. Eternal God, we come right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for your word on this day. We pray, Lord, that something was said and done. Uh, that would help us continue on the journey. Father God, we do know that our these circumstances that we are facing every day, some seem unfair, but we know you have it in the palm of your hand. And Father God, you know how to handle it even when we don't. We just ask God that you give us the strength to continue. Tend your own, O oh Lord God, and we'll be forever giving you praise. And, Father God, before we close the prayer today, we ask, Lord, that you bless our health care workers. Father God, bless our government. Father God, they can continue to do uh, what you have uh, commanded them to do. Amen. That we may be, learn how to be obedient, Father God. Sometimes we understand uh, you have to send trials and things such as this, amen, to uh, break us down to become obedient, Father God. If we can't obey those who are around us, who's striving to do the right thing, there's no way we'll be able to obey you, Lord. But we do know uh, this is a tool, I believe, Father, that uh, can be used to, to let, teach us how to uh, be more obedient, Father God. We ask God that you help us Obey your will, Father God. Continue to obey what you have commanded us to do, that we can move forward above, over and above our circumstances. And we'll forever give you praise, honor, and glory. Bless, 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 Lord. Bless all who are striving to do your will. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless and keep you as our prayer, my brothers and sisters, and until next time, please tune in, amen, to our uh, midweek Bible study, amen. And then uh, on next Sunday, amen, uh, let's uh, assemble again, amen. Uh, October, we don't know what's going to take place in October. We know God does, isn't that right? Amen. God bless and keep you is our prayer today. And until next week, uh, you be blessed.